This video is to do a more in-depth dive into the reconcile feature. Now the reconcile feature is a way of avoiding double counting your inventory. So if you make a purchase order, say of 2000 units of a product, and then you make an FBA shipment of the same 2000 units, there's a chance that it could show up and it could be double counting. So what you have to do is you have to tell the system that the 2000 units for the purchase order is the same 2000 units that you're sending to Amazon in the FBA shipment. Now you can see here what I mean by double counting. If we look at this particular product, we'll see that there is currently an order that is being sent in and it's arriving on June 28th. But then we also have the same inventory being currently checked in. So there's some double counting that's going on and you need to tell the system to stop double counting so that you have an accurate forecast. All right, so this is how you do this. There are a couple of different ways to be able to organize your inventory using the reconcile feature. The first thing I'm going to do is going to assign a, an FBA shipment to a purchase order. So here's this FBA shipment. Now purchase orders come from suppliers. So we're going to click on the supplier feature and then we are going to locate the supplier who supplies this product. And then it asks, are all units going to FBA? And we can say, yes, they are. Is there an order you created in SoStock? Yes. Now you can actually select the proper shipment that you created. So it's this one in this case. Now the entire order is 2,500 units. This one is 1,150 units. So we're going to confirm that and that's going to deduct that amount from that order. What we want to do is we want to zero out the uh, purchase order so that we know we've assigned every single, every single unit to a particular shipment. So if we did the same thing here, just walking through, you'll see, yes, there is an order we created. Here is the FBA. And then you see here that it's already deducted 1350 and now we're going to deduct, deduct another 600. All right, and now the last one. Let's say the last one, if you miscounted, if you made a mistake and you're not really sending in that entire amount of inventory, how do you correct that? You can actually correct it in here. Are all units going to Amazon? You say, no, I thought it was 750, but I found out it was only 700. Is there an order we already created? Yes, we'll find that same order. And now this one says 750. We say, no, I'm only going to send 700. Confirm, reconcile. Now it's going to give us this other option. The number of units is, does not match. Is there another order you already created? We say, no. They say, well, what are we supposed to do with this other 50 units? You say, there's a mistake. I'm not actually sending it. And that's going to remove those 50 units from being counted anywhere in your software. So we click confirm, and this entire purchase order has been reconciled now. When you go to locate this purchase order, you will see that it has assigned the FBA shipments to the purchase order. So you see here, right? And there's that 700 units checked in. All right. Now, what about if we had a work order? A work order is different from a purchase order in that it's an instruction to your warehouse. You're not actually purchasing the inventory. You're just moving the inventory from your warehouse or telling your warehouse to do something with your inventory. So let's look at this Dove shampoo. Okay, so we have Dove shampoo and we're sending it from our warehouse. Are all units going to Amazon? We say yes. Now what if I did not have a work order? And that's actually common. Sometimes you can send instructions to, to ship and then not create a work order. And you can actually do it backwards in that you can create a work order straight, straight from your FBA or straight from your FBA shipment and then um, just in, in the reconcile, create an order uh, using the FBA shipment just right here. So it asks, uh, there are no work orders selected 
what do we want to do? Add as one shipment to an existing work order. So we can add it as an, to an existing work order. We can say, you know what, I have this other work order. Let's add a, 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 an additional shipment to this work order and let's save that, right? And it's going um, per the work order that was already created. Now, if you haven't created a, a work order, you can create a new work order and you can create a new work order number. So we can say that this is dev and then say four, 0427 as that's the date that we created this FBA shipment and I actually wanted to adjust the lead time to that same date and I know that it's going to take me there's not going to be a production time so I'm just going to change this to ground and I'm going to say there's ground five days and so you can actually build out your work order very quickly right from here and it adjusts the new ETA and I record my entire amount of 100 units. And then I'm going to click Confirm. All right, now let's talk about some of these other choices that you have. So you can choose to connect it to a purchase order, and in that case you would select a supplier. You can choose to connect it to a work order, and in that case you can select a, a warehouse or a prep center, and it's going to give you only the only the items that, uh, only the vendors that are prep centers or warehouses. If you don't want to connect it to anything, for example, you're first setting up your account and we know about the one-time shipment, or you don't care to track this item, or you don't care to specifically associate it with anything, maybe you don't have a purchase order and your ordering is so fast, if you have like a one-week turnaround and you don't care to create purchase orders, you can just do none and mark it as a one-time shipment. Now, if this is an item that you happen to see, you know, at um, Walmart and it was on sale and you said, oh, I can make some money on that, right? Some retail arbitrage. Uh, you know that you're never gonna sell this again and you don't wanna track this at all. You can actually select snooze forever and it's never going to track or tell you to reorder that product. Okay. So the final, the final piece that I wanted to go over is what happens if you're not sending all of the inventory. Now, why would we use this feature? For example, let's say that we're, we've created a, a shipment and I have 100 units of this product and I'm not sending all of it. We have users who create orders in China so, they, so they'll order 10,000 units in, from China and they'll warehouse 8,000 units and only ship 2,000. But they will create the FBA shipment for all of the shipments at the same time. So they have 10,000 units in Amazon FBA and they want to associate it to the FBA shipment, but they want it to record as going to their warehouse. This is how you would do that. So you've got, you select the warehouse, and then you say, are all units going to, rather your supplier, are all units going to Amazon immediately? You can say no. Is there an order you created in so stocked? We'll say yes, and there's our order, right? Now, of this 100 units, you're only sending 50. So you are going to say, I'm sending 50. Now this doesn't match. The number of units selected doesn't match. Is there another order you created and so stopped? No. Okay, what are we gonna do about this? You can add the remaining to an existing purchase order. And the thing that we can do is we can actually, when we add it to the existing purchase order, we can change the location. So we can say that it's not going to FBA. This one's going to our warehouse. And you can actually, when you decide to send it to your warehouse, you can update it. And so 50 units is going to FBA and the other 50 still has labels on it, but it's going to your warehouse. So in this way, you're able to stop it from reporting to the software that your inventory is going to Amazon. So it's no longer going to show up in your Amazon reserve. It's no longer going to show in your inbound inventory. It's gonna show as arriving to your warehouse and then it will record in your warehouse at that point when it arrives.
So there are a lot of different ways to handle your inventory using the reconcile feature. I know it can sometimes see, seem a little bit overwhelming, but it's actually a very neat tool if you learn how to use it. And all you have to do is simply follow the prompts.